Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome a guest who is currently on the farmer's market train, essentially popping up booths at any opportunity, which got me thinking about, you guessed it, farmer's markets. What are they? Why are they important? And why should an entrepreneur care? To start, I must admit, I used to think farmer's markets were some kind of hippie thing where only the bougie went to shop. My goodness, was I completely wrong. By definition, a farmer's market is a physical retail marketplace intended to sell foods directly by farmers to consumers. Farmer's markets may be indoors or outdoors and typically consists of booths, tables, or stands where farmers sell their produce, live animals or plants, and sometimes prepare foods or beverages. Farmers markets exist in many countries worldwide and reflect our local culture and economies. Not only food, but music, craft, and people. Community, baby. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, farmer markets have become a critical ingredient to our nation's economy, food system, and communities. Connecting rural to urban farmers to consumers and fresh ingredients to our diets, farmer's markets are becoming economic and community centerpieces in cities and towns across the U.S., and that is what makes them so important. Purchasing from a farmer's market directly supports local farmers. It can help the environment by limiting produce, and it provides a better understanding of where our consumable foods come from. Discovering new spices, tastes, smells, and even sounds can all take place at a farmer's market as well. This is an opportunity to break bread with your fellow community members and score a few goods to take home along the way. The 2019 National Farmers Market Manager Survey showed that there are more than 8,000 farmers markets across the country, which is a great start. But here's the kicker, folks. In the most recent survey, there were 2 million U.S. farms in 2020, down from 2.2 million in 2007, leaving the 8,000 farmers markets a slim chance to support all the U.S. farmers. Now, I'm not going to go and pretending to understand the ins and outs of farming. I don't. But I do understand how supply and demand works, and there is very limited supply of farmer markets for the demand of produce our country requires. It is also important to note that while food prices are up in grocery stores, the largest increase in a decade, farmer's prices have dropped. So while we as consumers are paying more at the grocery store for beef, dairy, and produce, etc., Farmers are getting paid less for providing those goods to the grocery stores they provide to us. As for me, I like to support the entrepreneurs, like you, and that is why the entrepreneur should care. Unlike supermarkets where the shelves are full of food that have traveled days if not weeks, farmers markets are rich in fresh items being sold likely by the individuals that created them. In fact, here are the top 10 most profitable items to sell at a farmers market. Produce, baked goods, flowers and plants, eggs, milk, cheese and meat, bath and beauty products, honey, beverages, handmade crafts, handmade canned goods, candles and soap. That means this is not limited to just farmers or individuals growing produce. This is a diverse offering and entrepreneurial innovation. This past week, I was at the Beaverton's Farmer's Market and grabbed what they said was the best chili in town, according to the sign, after a quick trip to the local library across the street. A few weeks back, I was at the Portland State Farmer's Market enjoying a fresh bagel, reminiscing on the college years with my wife as the kid enjoyed the sounds of the guitarist playing for the day. Before the pandemic, OHSU would hold a weekly farmer's market on campus for employees during the summer months. Man, I miss those days. I do not miss them simply because of the food or because I was supporting small businesses. When I see a farmer's market, I see my community. I see my work as a youth in the fields of Marion County. I see my friends' families providing for themselves by providing for us, all of us. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Started with experimenting fruity hot sauce 
best recipes before funding a Kickstarter campaign in 24 hours after encouragement from friends. He is the creator of an all-natural hot sauce company, Luke's Hot Sauce. Please welcome Jake Newscomb. This episode is sponsored in part by Burnside Knives, essential tools for outdoor enthusiasts and working professionals like yourself. Visit BurnsideKnives.com. Your knife says a lot about you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I have the owner of Nukes Sauce, Jake. How are we doing? I'm. This is the first time I think I've had a guest that come and talk about hot sauce, which is one of my passions. I love hot sauce. So let's let's introduce the world to Jake Newscom. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, I'm pretty beat, but I'm I'm energized enough to to chat. Thanks for having me on. We just did a food festival for the past two days. Uh, probably the most successful two days we've had as a business. So. I'm I'm coming down from that wave, but uh, it was super fun. We did Snack Fest in Southeast Portland, and uh, it was a blast. But yeah, feeling I'm great. I'm excited. We're gonna have to get into detail about that before before we get into that. Let's introduce the world to Jake. So who is Jake? Who is the owner of Nukes Sauce? Oh yeah, so I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy. Uh, <laughs> I am originally from Maine. I came out to Portland seven years ago for an audio internship, which is what I studied in school. And then um, I worked in the theater community in Portland for seven years as a sound engineer and sound designer. Then COVID came. And as we all know, you can't go to events during that time. So all my gigs were canceled. I was laid off. I had a hot sauce recipe. I was uh, traveling in Mexico quite a bit before the pandemic, just like eating street tacos and street foods, a lot of like flavorful foods. I've always loved to cook. And I started messing around in the kitchen with a with a fruity hot sauce, bananas with habanero, which is pretty unique. And uh, started a Kickstarter. I just I don't know how it happened. It was kind of almost like an accident. It just kind of happened overnight. I set up the Kickstarter. My friend Joe did the artwork, and things just started moving uh, naturally. And here we are, a couple of years later, um, growing, growing pretty pretty well. I'm full time doing this. Um, I still freelance as an audio engineer occasionally, but I'm like, go, go, go on nukes 100% and uh, having a blast. Yeah. So for the audience at home, what exactly is Nukes Hot Sauce? Yeah, Pretty self-explanatory, so but let's, let's get a little more detail. Yeah, Nukes Hot Sauce is uh, all natural hot sauce based out of Portland, Oregon. We've got five flavors uh, in our roster and they all have fruit in them. So they have a sweetness to them except for our chipotle sauce, which is more of a root vegetable with smokier flavors. That's probably our best seller. Um, we are gonna do a, a one-off like exclusive sauce that comes out next month. That's just gonna be one batched and done, but we have our five staples sauces that we sell at farmer's markets and whatnot. Um, it's a fun company. We love uh, making fun commercials, like having fun with the brand, uh, building the community, connecting with people. Um, it's just, it's just been a lot of fun. I love to see people eating our hot sauces on their food. It just really like makes my heart feel warm. It's an amazing feeling. So that's in a nutshell. I mean, it's a hot sauce company. So yeah. <laughs> that's, that's basically what we got going on so far. Well, let's, let's talk about though, how the concept kind of originated from, cause you know, you mentioned, you know, that you got through the pandemic and, and you've been a fan of food, but why hot mm. sauce? Why, why you said you also had this recipe, you know, how did, uh -huh. how did the concept decide, like, you know what, this is it. I'm going to do the hot sauce. Yeah. 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 So I, like I said, I was traveling in Mexico quite a bit and uh, I was coming right off of a Mexico trip and I went straight to Boston where I used to, used to live. And I got together with my friend, Eric, uh, and he let me stay at his house and he was telling me about cooking hot sauce. And he, and it was just a very entertaining, like cool conversation. He was talking about how he had to wear like a full like glove and mask. And the whole thing was just, I don't know, it was kind of cracking me up, but it was also just interesting. And he was really enthusiastic about it. And it just like, was a, it was just a nice conversation. And I was excited to try something. He was making a, a raspberry habanero sauce, which I thought sounded interesting using fruit. And so then when I came back to or back to Oregon, I like, you know, I just was thinking about that. I went to a Mexican market. I saw some, some peppers. I saw the bananas and I just naturally grabbed them. And then I went home and I started just looking up basic recipes. Um, I found some hot sauce uh, forums. There's a hot pepper forum is one online with a lot of information on how to cook a hot sauce. And uh, yeah, I cranked out the first batch of what is now called the Nukes Kind of Mild or the Nukes Original. 
Um, it was a little, a little weird at first because it's like a unique flavor profile, but and it took some dialing in. But uh, we got it, we got it dialed in, and I gave some to friends and coworkers, and everyone was like, you know what? I'm not trying to toot your own horn here or toot your horn, but like because you're my friend, but this is actually really good. You should maybe, you should maybe consider making this a thing if you want to. And I guess it sounds cheesy, but I have always had a bit of a hustler in me, like a side hustle, whether it's like flipping things on eBay or thrifting or all sorts of little things. Like I used to have a, a tape cassette record label where I would just dub tapes all day and then send them out on mail order. Like all these things that I've done right. in the past and all of these things merged together into one thing. And then here, here we are with another fun project. And that's all it was, it was just a fun project. Um, but it got a lot of love back and a lot of support and, um, all of my other projects where I've put energy into making tapes and whatnot, like those never came back in, in like a, in a financial reward, right? That was all just kind of like, uh, a side hobby. Um, but this one was actually showing like, I, if I really put the same amount of work that I do into my career into this, I think I could actually work for myself. And i just, I just really have been having a lot of fun with it. So I continue to do it. Um, so yeah, that's a really long-winded question. Oh, that's great the answer. Uh, the caffeine is in the system right now. So <laughs> I like you. Now let's. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned you know your buddy was kind of talking about the preparation of hot sauce and having him you know wear a suit and glove. Let let, let tell me mm. this about tell me a little bit about this process uh -huh. because I'm very it's very foreign to me. How do you yeah. make hot sauce? How did you decide to like you know you said you didn't go to school for hot sauce making, but you're making nope. some pretty good in hot sauce. How'd you, how'd you kind of go yeah. about that? Actually, I could really nerd out for a second because there's probably a few listeners that are looking for some really specific information. Yes, exactly. Um, when I started, I found it was really hard to find specific information. Um, also, I should say, I am not, I don't, I don't, you know, I've taken the courses for acidified foods, but you should always double check uh, the actual FDA codes and everything before you just listen to some guy on a podcast. But <laughs> uh, basically there are some basic rules with the style of hot sauce I make, which is like, you have to get it up to 180 degrees when you cook it to kill any bacteria. You have to bottle it in a certain way. There's something called the hot fill hold method where you put it in the bottle at a hot temperature of 180, you cap it immediately, you flip it upside down to kill any possible uh, bacteria on the cap. It also gives it a seal. So when you open it, you get that, um, that nice pop. And then uh, the pH level is another thing for acidified foods. It has to be below 4.0, I believe, maybe 4.1, um, which that makes it shelf stable um, before, until you open it. And um, yeah, so, so there's all, all these little things that you have to take a course. I, it's called the Better Process Control School, something like that. Um, I took it online. Um, and that really gets you going. That's a, that's a good place to start. Uh, as far as making it, uh, I've gone through a lot of different phases of how I make sauces, like how I bottle, how many I make at a time. I started just making 12 at a time in my kitchen. And that was, that was a big day for me. <laughs> uh, the first year I, I did it all out of my home kitchen in a one bedroom apartment in Portland. It was crazy. There's no way other to say it was crazy. Um, if my landlord's listening, like, I'm sorry, the house <laughs> is going to smell like peppers forever. But like, yeah, that was just bonkers. I was selling out constantly and cooking on my days off. Um, it was nuts. Now I use a co-packing facility in Tacoma where I am actively there when they cook and I get to be part of the cooking process, but, but, um, it's so much more convenient for me where I can just make these kind of, they're still small batches, but, um, they're, they're bigger and I can stock up and I don't have to do everything myself anymore. So I'm not going to burn out. I like um, it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's you do talk have to wear gloves for sure. <laughs> <laughs> let's take yeah. a little bit about the, the transition, kind of like the vertical integration that you had from going to the kitchen to now having, you know, outsourcing that. How did you yeah. find, you know, a, a company to kind of help with that? Uh huh. Yeah. So I, I use this company called Sauceworks in Tacoma. Um, it took a lot of, a lot of energy and work to find them. Uh, there's quite a few in Portland that are closer, close by that like I could drive in 10 minutes, but for whatever reason, I would email them or call them and I would just not hear back from them. I would like get long winded emails that were like, not, they didn't feel human. It felt like I was talking to like an automated response and, 
Um, but I called this one place in, in Tacoma called Sauceworks and the guy picked up and we were able to have a, like a very down to earth conversation about how it works. And that's, that's the type of relationship that I want. And, uh, we, he told me the price, just, it costs this much per unit. Um, this is the paperwork you need to have. Like you need to prove to me that you're, you know, a real business and all your recipes are approved by the FDA, blah, 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 blah. And then we just like kind of started working together and it's been, it's been really good. I, I have thought about using other co-packers, but uh, again, it's just like the communication isn't there. Um, I don't know what's up with that, but I mean, yeah, the relationship with SauceWorks has been perfect for me. And it's also, um, it's not super huge where I need to make like 10,000 units to fill a minimum order or something. It's right at the level of growth that's good for nukes right now where I can like make a thousand bottles or something and that'll last me well, we'll see. <laughs> I just made, I just made them. So let's see how long they last really. Um, but uh, it was a big shift. A lot of people don't do it ever. Like there are, there are a lot of successful companies that um, they never co-pack. They've been in it for five, 10 years or more. Their favorite part of the process is cooking the hot sauce. They, they want to like have the marketing go to another people or other people. They want to like have the, the selling of the sauces be put on other people. They want to stay in the kitchen. They want to build their own facilities. So there's no, there's no like path you have to go on. I've just found that I personally love the marketing side. I love engaging with the community, being out there, selling, selling it to people, doing the events. And uh, the cooking part is pretty simple for our recipes. So I feel like I can dump it on another company and uh, the quality is still there. So that's, that's how that's worked. Um, I like it. You know, yeah. one of the things you, you, you kind of mentioned, you know, this is a lot of work or you started in the one bedroom apartment by yourself. How difficult was it to start this business? Um, that's a good question. I think, I think it was pretty hard, honestly. Uh, there were a lot of difficulties. Uh, there still are a lot of difficulties. I'm still learning a lot of things, a lot of nuances. Um, the beginning stages were extremely hard to figure out. Like I was very scared my first like three to six months of making a safe food product and like shipping it um, and like having strangers eating it and making sure that I had checked all the boxes of what needs to be done to make something safe. Cause it's pretty bizarre when you, when you make a food product <laughs> And it just like, it just started happening Orders started coming in. And I was like, I think I can, I think, I think I can sell this right. And I had to check and make sure there were a lot of like unknowns and I, I can be kind of a worry guy. Like I can worry and get nervous. And uh, I, I had a lot of anxiety at the, at the beginning stages, but I've grown to, once I realized I'm all good, I've checked with like the, my ODA representative and you know, I know, I know how to launch a product now successfully. Um, that, that feels easier to do now and any bumps in the road that come up, uh, you know, I just, I just try to navigate them with ease and, um, remind myself that I'm doing this because it's fun and it's rewarding to work for yourself and these struggles are, or I told a story once on a podcast of like the first really big order I got, I, I burned the batch. I got a thousand bottle order for me. That was huge at the time. I was making 50 bottles at a time. And they said, we need it next month in New York, like shipped on a pallet. And I didn't know how to scale up my recipe that big. I didn't know how to ship a pallet. I just said, yes, because I needed to pay my bills. And I wanted to like, I wanted to do it. And then I went and I bought all these ingredients. I didn't have any money. Like I, I grew up, like my first job was Wendy's. So like, I, I like, I had money, but like not, I and I still don't like have money. I just like, but I was like, this is going to wipe me out. And I bought like, you know, a thousand dollars worth of ingredients or something and uh, went into the kitchen and, and screwed up. And I like burnt half the batch. And I, I literally cried that night. Like I was like so upset, but uh, I, I ended up pulling myself back up and, making the orders like hundred bottles at a time out of the kitchen and then getting the order fulfilled. So those things suck, like growing pains suck, but they are, it's so cool to look back and be like, that didn't get me, that didn't kill me. And I hear I am stronger. Right. So it feels, feels good to look back on that stuff. The struggles. 
Yeah. And it's, and, uh, it's super important to kind of highlight those things too. And I, I talk about this often. I, one of the things we talked about was imposter syndrome at some point. And I'm talking yeah. about, you know, it, it's imperative that when you have a win, you, you, you really celebrate those wins. Cause sometimes they, you know, for some, they're sometimes few and far between. Right. And yeah. for others, they might be a lot, but at the end of the day is celebrating those moments because the, the sweet isn't as sweet without the bitter. Yeah, man. I, I hear you. And I, I definitely struggle with the imposter syndrome because I'm a white guy making hot sauces. Right. I mean, that's a thing. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's a thing. I'm also not a classically trained chef. Like I just like cooking and people like the sauces and that's it. It's that simple. So I'm going to keep making them if people eat them. So, but I do struggle sometimes when I'm like, Oh, these guys like trained at the culinary arts school and their sauces are, are killer. And, but I, but I know that mine are too. So like, yeah. I got to just like take a step back and be like, it's all good, man. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I like uh, it. Everyone, you know? Yeah. One of the things you talked about was financing. Uh, you, you talked mm. about, you know, kind of going yeah. through that process. How did you finance this? You, you talked about the Kickstarter. Did you do uh -huh. also like any, any um, venture capital or are you very kind of grassroots effort? Yeah. Grassroots pretty much. I, I can nerd out about money and I'm pretty, um, pretty much a penny pincher. I was talking to my friend today. He was talking about how he went out last night and like blew a bunch of money at the bar or whatever. At least like had a crazy night out. And I was like, dude, I can't even like, like last night I had the best nukes day ever. Like we, we sold a lot of sauce and I went out for a drink and I was like, how much is the well whiskey going to cost me? And like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I need to let go of that, man. Cause I grew up with like nothing. So, but yeah, um, to answer your question, uh, I just have a tight budget. Um, I try not to take out any loans or debt. I, I am a debt free guy. I don't like borrowing money if I don't have to. Um, but that being said, I, I did just take out a, a bit of a loan to fulfill a, a pretty big order, but I pay it back within a month because that order is already fulfilled and I'll be getting a check in, in 30 days. Um, I think as I grow, you know, if, you know, something like Whole Foods or who knows, hot ones hits me up and says, Hey, we need 14,000 bottles by, you know, November, then, you know, that could be six figures and I don't have six figures. So I'll take a loan out for that. I think it's smart to like get the order in, get it in writing, and then, you know, you're good. And then you can, why not take a loan? You know, you know, the money's coming in, but I haven't, I've had a lot of people tell me they were, they would buy equity. Um, they would, Tell me, tell me when you're ready for investments. And I have friends that have money and they, and they really do want to give me a good loan or for equity. And I just haven't really opened that door. I did get into a business class recently and we're going to talk about that um, and how to manage those conversations. Because, um, yeah, I don't know. Nukes, nukes could be uh, just a hobby for another year or it could become a multi-million dollar business. Like that's not a crazy thing. And I don't want to shoot myself in the foot and give... 10% to a friend for borrowing $10,000. And then uh, three years from now, I'm like, Oh yeah, well, I hope you enjoy your ginormous yeah. change. From yeah, all 10, my yeah. Like look yeah. at the Amazon split recently, right? The 30 to one split. I mean, you have what, something like a thousand dollars with Amazon turned or a thousand shares turned into like 300,000 shares. <laughs> so yeah. It's pretty nice. I also, I also invest all of my money. Like I, I invest in Roth IRA, I invest in like single stocks and I also invest in crypto and I've been doing that for a long time. So I feel like I've, I've just really had my mind on money management for a while. So I'm just, I don't know. I just, uh, you know, it's not all sales that, that goes back into nukes. It's also like investments and, and, um, savings sometimes, but yeah. You know, you, you brought up something that's very important that I don't think I've actually highlighted yet on the show, and the IRAs, right, the retirement, and why that is so important. So for the folks at home that may not be aware of this, but you as an individual uh, can put away $19,500 annually away pre-tax. So every year pre-tax, you can put that money away. And now, why is that important? There's a few, a few different reasons why that's important. Um, one, it can lower your tax, your, your payable tax bracket. So I believe the tax bracket, if you make over 82,500, 82, you'll be paying 24% taxes versus if you're under that 82,000, you're actually going to be paying 22% taxes. 
So let's give an example. Let's say you make $100,000 a year and you put away $19,500 away. So now instead of your, you know, your salary at the end of the year for taxable income, instead of it being $100,000 at 24%, you're now at $81,500 at 22% because you put away that nineteen five. dollars So those are just little things for you to think about at home um, and why it's so important because mon- putting money away, investing is, is so important. Um, Crypto is a great way uh, to diversify your your assets as well. NFTs are a different thing, you know, those are coming up as well. There's there's so many different forms. Now, Jake, is this your first business? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's fair to say this is my first real business. Yeah. And you mentioned you've been kind of going out and like going to trade shows and meeting with people and education. Why do you, in your perspective, why is that so important? Uh, networking is is not only like just fun to socialize and learn. You learn a lot when you talk to people in the industry, but it's just a uh, just a good way to build your brand and uh, get the word out of your product. And uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, I'm always selling sauces at these events too, so it's just a way to to you know pay the bills. Yeah, and so how how do you build the brand? How do you sell your brand? How do you market your brand? Mm. Uh, you know. I, I'm kind of just rolling with it. I don't have any business uh, background to be completely clear, uh, which I think is kind of fun to be uh, building a business with like, it just feels kind of like this wild thing I'm doing. Um, But I, I honestly like, I think the stuff that really works is collaborating with other artists and people that you genuinely enjoy. Like I, I grew up in the music industry. So I collaborate with bands I love. And because I put that work in because I love I love the band genuinely and we'll make a special bottle and then that resonates with their fans and it just feels good I think I think like if you hold a product in your hand that comes from like love as corny as that might sound but if like something like something like love was used when you created it then like it it resonates off of it and you could even go as like this is pretty hippy dippy but like you could even go into the cooking process like if someone's stressed out and they're like, oh, I got to make hot sauce again today. And they're just like, not even really doing it with care. Then it's different with someone who's like, you know, loves what they're doing. And like, I don't know, you could probably taste that <laughs> in a weird way. Um, but yeah, collaborating with people you enjoy, like, I don't know, it's kind of like nukes is a reflection of myself in some ways. And um, it just feels like it resonates with people in an authentic way because of that, I guess. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely. Yeah. And, and, and you know, one thing that kind of leads me to is, is, you know, starting this, what, what motivates you? What is your motivating factor? Uh, fun, humor, flavor, uh, family, friends, entertainment, like getting together, sharing a meal, having a good time. I like yeah. it. What would you say, you know, going through this process has been surprisingly hard? Um, sometimes like I'm still learning about like the ebb and flow of business and like how busy things can get and then how slow things can get. Um, I'm about to get extremely busy and I have been the past four months. I haven't had any markets. So there's been a lot of me just sitting in my apartment kind of feeling like I'm twiddling my thumbs and all my friends have jobs and they're nine to fivers or they're, you know, right. like, and I'm just kind of like, am I willing? And that feeling, but I know I'm, I'm working for my computer every day. I'm emailing people. I'm working on the next project, the next recipe, the next collaboration. But sometimes it's kind of like a lonely path where you're just like, yeah, I don't have a lot of friends that own businesses. So it's like, I'm very much alone in that. Um, that, that can be a struggle for me. Um, not connecting with similar folks in the industry or something like that. Um, and like figuring out if it's normal to have these slow periods. Uh, I'm pleased to say that I kept thinking that during these past four months, they would be the first times where I, I wasn't going to be able to pay the bills. Um, but every month, that's uh, not been the case. So, and these are the slow months. So, I should I should be stoked about that. <laughs> and yeah, I am. Totally. Um, but those are kind of kind of some of the struggles there. 
And also like differentiating yourself amongst a wall of hot sauces where there's a lot of similar flavors and trying to make like unique, something unique, you know, there's, yeah. there's stores I'm in where there's just over 50 bottles next to each other. And you're like, how do you, how do you differentiate yourself? And uh, so that's kind of a challenge. Yeah. And I must admit the, the sense of loneliness um, that kind of sets in, uh, I think amongst, amongst a lot of entrepreneurs has been resonating, you know, true with myself, including with all the folks I've been interviewing. Um, and that's kind of really why I started this podcast, right. To kind of get out and I'm an extrovert. I want to meet with people, I want to talk with people or I'm like, say, Hey, how, how are you doing? You know? And, mm -hmm. and so folks at home, I think it's imperative to also, like, I think I've said this before, but it's okay to ask each other, how, how are you doing? You know, and, and, you know, really be oh, genuine yeah. about it. Cause I think people, we're all going through this, you know, pandemic together. Um, I'm not sure. Have you ever been a pandemic before? I've, this is my first one. <laughs> this is my first one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so none of us know what we're doing and there's going to be people yeah. that are, are affected differently from it. And so please don't, you know, there's going to be companies that are still going to be requiring masks and, and please, please be respectful of that. Um, we don't know their backstories, right? We don't know what's going on. And so just, just be respectful of that. Now, Jake, what would you say uh, going through this process that you maybe found surprisingly easy? Has there anything been easy? easy? Yeah. Um, selling this stuff has been easy. I, I I'm telling you, I've heard about part. you a lot. And I think I think you are <laughs> onto something. I, I'm telling you, a lot of people know about this sauce now. Yeah, I, I thought that that was going to be the hardest thing. And then I, I did my first farmer's market, and I set up with my little lemonade st style stand, you know, just a little table and the sauces. And I remember saying, if I sell eight bottles today, I'll be so happy and because uh, that'll pay for my booth. And eight bottles were just gone in, in an hour and then there was more time to sell. So, and it, it, the product sells itself, which is just really nice. Um, of course it helps when you, you push it and you tell people about it and you engage with people. But if I did want to be lazy one day and just kind of sit back, sometimes I'll do it as an experiment and see what happens. Uh, the, the sauce seems to sell itself. So that's, that was a lot easier than I thought. I thought I was gonna have to work hard to move the product, but it seems to, seems to go pretty smoothly when you, when you make something good it's kind of easy how how quickly that thing just comes to fly off the shelf now uh, what as a, as a small business owner what what do you say would keeps you up at night oh um oh uh, let's see that's a that's kind of a tough one um i actually i sleep pretty well uh, <laughs> <I don't. laughs> um Sometimes, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll, uh, it's hard to turn the, turn the switch off sometimes when you get excited about making something excited about, you know, I do a lot of graphic design for the company. So sometimes I'll just, I'll just like burn the midnight oil working on a new design or something, but, uh, stress and, and stuff like that. I don't, I don't feel like I have a lot of stress with this anymore. Like it comes and goes, but right now it's pretty, it's not that it's pretty, pretty groovy right now. Things are like kind it. of groove, grooving along. Yeah. Sometimes it's, sometimes you don't have a problem. That's, that's it. Man, no problems are good. I wouldn't mind no problems. <laughs> <laughs> but that's when I, that's when I wonder is like, should I have problems? <laughs> that a sign of growth? That's where that imposter syndrome starts to set in, right? Cause it's like, Oh man, this is going so well for so long. I'm kind of waiting for something to come in and just, you know, yeah, put a wrench yeah. in it. Yeah, I know. Um, but no, I don't have anything specific that keeps me up at night other than maybe just being able, having the ability to stop myself from working, you know, because I get excited about working yeah. and I want, I want to keep going. Like I, I'm getting, I'm starting to work at a practice of just like turning notifications off and like stop stopping, like replying to Instagram and emails. But if you catch me between like 8am to like six, I am like, pretty much always responding as fast as I can. And um, I just, I just love, I love doing this. So I, I just can't turn myself off unless I like set rules for myself. So I like it's it. probably one of the struggles. Now, how do you track all this information as a business? You know, you, you got sales coming in, you got new clients coming in, you got vendors. What, what mm -hmm. do you use to track all this stuff? Uh, for accounting stuff, I use uh, QuickBooks, and I think this year will be the first year where I actually hire someone to look over my QuickBooks. But uh, I've done the training online to like it's pretty pretty basic. I mean, link your 
business bank accounts to it and uh, make sure you only use the card when it's a business expense and whatnot. Uh, get those things uh, dialed in um, and then let it run itself. So that's what I do with that. Uh, wholesale, I have uh, basically just a template email that is just a quick blurb about our sauces, who we are, uh, our prices. And I just email that out to a bunch of stores that I want to get into. And maybe I'll hear back from one of 20. And then uh, maybe they don't even want to put an order in. They want me to send them free sauce. And I'll do that because that's just part of the game. I send a lot of free stuff out just to like try to get an order. And um, I budget for that. You know, I'm like, I'm going to eat like $300 worth of free sauces shipped to all these places. And um, it comes back. You know, usually you get rewarded because those people will put an order in and then it moves there and you and then you have a long-term relationship with those people uh I also for established wholesale people I will like and I have another template for like emailing them once a month and saying what's up with the inventory let me know I can ship out tomorrow or I can drop off tomorrow so just keeping the conversation flowing staying connected with like your customers is super important so um yeah that's that's basically what I do there I like it now, what advice do you have for aspiring entrepreneurs? Oh, yeah. Well, for hot sauce people specifically might be what I should focus on because that's what I know. Um, I would definitely check out the Hot Pepper Forum. It's a really good resource and active community of folks that are making flavorful sauces. And uh, some of them are just having fun. Some of them are building a company and living off of it. Uh, you can ask all sorts. Of, you can nerd out about the science. You can talk about fermented sauce if you're into that. You can talk about all sorts of things in there. Uh, great resource. Look into starting a Kickstarter or a fundraising campaign that worked really well for us. I, I did not expect it, but it got funded in 24 hours. So that was, that was really great. Um, wow. Yeah. That's a good place to start. You know, like use it. the internet. What the hell it's 2022. The internet's amazing. It's just like so much information we're spoiled and people would rather watch TikTok videos of people like petting their cat than actually learn <laughs> something. You know, it's I, it, it's in, we're yeah for folks at home I, I don't think you understand the the privilege we are at this point in time in our lives where we truly do have all the information that you can possibly ever need for any subject at your fingertips now previously we did and then the last generations did they just had to go to a library right and a little bit harder mm -hmm. but we truly do have now it's also imperative to um, make this comment make sure your information is accurate I was going to say, we got a lot of misinformation as <laughs> make well. Make sure you accurately, uh, and, make, and if the source is cited, uh, cited, make sure to look at that source because sometimes even cited sources are inaccurate or um, they're intentionally trying to skew a specific message. So just be mindful of that. But it's it's very true that the, the amount of education, uh, and I hope this podcast serves as some form of, of um, different medium to provide some insight into this world, but you know, it, there's just so much, so much knowledge and information out there to be had for a lot of people. Just you just gotta exactly. look. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, look anyone listening to this is doing is doing it because they're listening to an educational podcast. So yeah, this is a perfect example. You know? Yeah. Or or we could be like Bill and Madison, and like you have now gotten dumber for having sat through this entire episode. No. <laughs> no. <not at> all. <laughs> so for the listeners at home. Where can they find you? Where can they get some of your sauce? Where, do you have a brick and mortar? Do you, or you're at like a, um, talk about some of the locations and in particular, some of the farmer markets. Yeah, let's do that. So first off, Nukes Sauces, N-E-W-K-S, sauces.com has all the information of where all of our stores that we're at. And it also has all the farmer's markets we're at. And of course you can order online and we ship pretty much every day. So that's all you really need, but um, we are gearing up for our busiest season yet. I like uh, it. Seven, yeah, me too. Uh, seven farmers markets a week during the summer here in wow. Portland. We got the Lentz Market, St. John's Market, Kenton, Hillsboro, Tigard, uh, one in Vancouver, and can I remember the other one? Shemansky. Shemansky. That's all seven. Wow. So we're doing those, going to hire some hands uh, to help out the booths. Uh, let's see, what else? That pretty much covers it. we got the Portland Hot Sauce Expo coming up in August. I'm flying across the country to Boston to do a, 
a Boston Hot Sauce Expo in uh, May. That'll be fun. Uh, with Barry's Hot Sauce, they're throwing that. That should be fun. I haven't actually met these people in real life. We've been Instagram friends. I'm ready to get out of the phone and into the real oh, yes. world because that's, yes. that's where the real stuff's at. I True. love the phone, but I'm like way more into real life conversation. So yep. those are some exciting things and uh, a lot more festivals coming up this summer. Uh, so if you follow us on Instagram, that's where we hang out mostly. You'll find all that stuff. Man, you have, you got yourself a jam packed schedule coming up. I'm really excited. We where, where, where do you, where, where kind of do you see yourself in five years? Mm. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, ideally, I would love to see us in uh, as a national brand. Uh, I want to be available to everyone in the country, and I want to be able to travel while I'm doing that. I want to be able to run nukes from my computer. Um, I don't know. That seems kind of uh, wild but it does seem possible. So we'll yeah. see. But I'm also like kind of Buddhist by nature. So like if I find myself right where I am today, five years from now, that sounds great too. So there's no, I don't want to build this huge expectation for myself and then be disappointed. Nice. Nice. Well, yeah. for folks at home, please visit Nukes online, visit some of the locations. He's going to be at all these farmers market in all sorts of communities. So it's also important because there's so many other vendors at these farmers markets that you can help support as well. Absolutely. So please do get out there. Jake, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. I really do appreciate it. Uh, for folks at home, please subscribe to the podcast. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And yes, I did open a TikTok. I have not posted a single thing on it, but it's there. I have the I have the username and everything just so somebody can't take it. But Jake, thank you so much for again for your time for coming on the show. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.